Welcome to Yagba's Epic Tales. The title of today's story is Pregnant for Mr. Nobody. Uju was orphaned at age 17. So, she lives with her uncle and his family, Mazi Anozi, who is a wealthy timber dealer. Mazi Anozi's family is made up of his wife, Aunt Yazuka, as Uju usually calls her, and two daughters, Isioma and Yagazi. Aunt Azuka does not like Uju, so she treats her badly and influences her daughters against her also. Isioma and Yagazi are both older than Uju, but they would not do any work but make Uju do all the work in the house, from cooking to washing, breaking firewood, going to the market and farm and every or any other job needed to be done in the house. Isioma and Yagazi wear beautiful and expensive clothes, but Uju was always in rags. They would laugh at her and always refer to her as the ugly maid, though she was more beautiful than they were. Mazi Anozi was mostly away on business trips, so he could do nothing much about Uju's condition. Auntie Azuka owns a store in the market where she sells various food items. She makes Uju sell in her store after completing the house shows. Uju is given a certain target of amount of sales to make every day. On days when Uju did not meet this target, she would not be allowed to enter the house and would be sent to go get the complete amount. Usually, Uju would go to her friend Ubioma's place to pass the night whenever she was sent out of the house. But Obioma had traveled to visit her elder sister in the city, who had put to bed few weeks ago. So, on this particular night, Uju decided to sleep in the veranda of a store close to their house. Activities continued as it was as the days went by. Not long after, Uju became sick. She started finding it difficult to wake up early like she always did. She also started throwing up at the smell of food while cooking. Auntie Azuka suspected Uju could be pregnant and her suspicion was confirmed after she took Uju to the community health center. Uju was confused. She had never been with a man all her life. She has been a virgin. How did she get pregnant? And for whom? Uju was beaten and questioned, but she could not tell who it was and how it happened. Isioma and Yagaze mocked her. The maltreatment even increased. Uju would walk from dawn to dusk in her condition. Meanwhile, the prince of the town had returned from London. But while he was still in London preparing to return to his village, the news of his parents, the king and queen's death, from a ghastly motor accident reached him. The prince was shattered and depressed. How could this happen after completing his education in a long time in the white man's land and now he is back home? How could he miss his parents? In a bid to take, out, take him out of his depressed state, his friend gave him a drug to calm him down as he traveled back home. Soon, it was announced 
that there would be a royal party and a dance contest in which the crown prince would pick a bride before the day of the coronation where he will be crowned king. All the maidens in the land started getting ready for the big day. Isioma and Yagaze too started preparing. Who wouldn't want to marry such fine and educated prince who had schooled in London? And who wouldn't want to be a queen also? Every maiden in the land was asked to be present, whether rich or poor, or whether you're a master's daughter or a maid. Isioma and Yagaze were happy about Uju's condition because she would have had the opportunity to go for the dance contest even though she was a maid according to them but the fact that she is pregnant has already disqualified her for it is against the custom of the land to marry a maiden who is pregnant for another man much more for a prince or a king to marry such maiden they laughed and mocked her you will die a miserable old woman with a child and no husband, they said to her. This made Uju wept bitterly, cause this seemed true. I will die a miserable woman, she said. Meanwhile, Auntie Azuka, in a bid to increase the chances of her daughters, bribed the chief palace cook. To put laxative in the food that will be served to all the other contestants so that they would not be able to dance properly as a result of a running stomach. The day of the contest came and Auntie Azuka's plan worked. Most of the girls left the contest due to running stomach and the few who stayed back and tried to dance could not dance properly because of their condition. Only Isioma and Yagazi were able to dance properly. At the end of the dance, the prince picked Yagazi. But as Yagazi was to be pronounced as the prince chosen bride and queen to be, the chief priest immediately stopped the announcement. Hey there, enjoying the story? Then you might want to subscribe to this channel for more interesting stories. We post captivating and exciting traditional and modern folktales three times every week. You should also turn on the notification bell so you'll be the first to know when we post a new story. Very well then, now that you've done that, let's dive right back into our story. The gods has revealed that there is a maiden who is carrying the prince's child and heir to the throne. She is the one whom the gods have chosen. She must be found and be crowned, and the heir of this kingdom must not be born outside the palace, the chief priest declared. Everybody was in confusion. How could this be? As the prince impregnated a lady while in London, they all asked and wondered. After a while and a deep thought, the prince recalled that the only woman he had slept with who could still be pregnant at this time was a young maiden he met sleeping in an open area several months ago when he had returned home after hearing of the death of his parents. His friend had given him the wrong drug. The drug he had taken increased a strong sexual drive in him instead of calming him down. In a bid to satisfy the strong urge, he had found a girl lying down in the open and had slept with her out of frustration. He had felt sorry after that night and had been going to the place every night after that day 
to find the young maiden and apologize to her. But he has not been able to find her. He didn't even know she became pregnant. The prince told the chiefs in council and the chief priest this. A search was made to look for the maiden. And after thorough search from house to house, asking questions, it was discovered that the said maiden was Uju. Uju had felt so weak, sick, tired and exhausted that night that she had fallen into a deep sleep. That is why she couldn't recall what had happened that night. Uju was taken to the palace. The prince apologized to Uju and performed the traditional rites. Uju became queen and was loved by the prince together with their son. Auntie Azuka and her daughters were disappointed and ashamed. Now, let's see what moral lessons that can be learned from the story. Number one, it is wrong to write people off. Moral lesson number two, it is wrong to send children out of the house as a way of punishment no matter what the reasons are cause sending them out of the house exposes them to danger like in the case of Uju. Moral lesson number three never ever give up no matter what situation you are going through for there is hope Remember, Uju had given up and thought she would die a miserable woman. But it wasn't so cause of her innocence. What other moral lesson do you think is worthy to note in the story? Please share in the comment section. See you in our next video. Bye.